when you're in that situation, would you really? No, God, no, like, you wouldn't. Like, would you oh. really? No one at this table. Like, would. being honest, like. Oh, that's so funny. It's such a deep sexual fantasy that girls have. Their point. So it's like, what's that's like an ego too. feed? Yeah, exactly. Men just want to be respected what ultimately. Are you yeah. saying that she has too high standards? Yes, I am actually. Oh my God. <laughs> have, has any girl here ever sent a letter to an inmate in prison? Oh my God, she has. Oh, whoops. Oh so she, she didn't want him to be surfing with men boundaryless inappropriate friendships with men That's to true. model to post pictures of yourself in a bathing suit to post sexual pictures friendships with women who are in unstable places and from your wild recent past beyond getting a lunch or coffee or something respectful i agree with that I well you're making a little bit of a because i'm like what is like something respectful like is can i only get coffee with my friend and like what fucking like excuse me like exchange little like notes about my recent like escapades and that's it like that's all right bye like that's it brunch he probably what doesn't if, he probably doesn't want his girl like going to the club or the bar with her with her single female friend single girls are like recruiters that, yeah right there's a lot of people in la that are like involved with a lot of like scandalous dirty stuff mm. doing drugs and just out till like five in the morning every night yeah basically like i could see like on the way over here we me and Burke were talking about how like as a friend you should be able to point your good friends right or wrong and tell them and they should be able to like take that as perspective and you do know. you think that girls tend to do that because I find that a lot of the time when girls have single friends, the single friends tend to be recruiters. They want you to come join the single train 1, again. thousand percent. Yeah. A lot of single girls, they look at their friends and they, it, no matter if they're in the wrong or the right, you look at your friend as like, okay, you're hurting. Let's go out and party. Let's get, you know, let's turn it up. Do you think, is, do you think that's good, good advice for a girl in a relationship with not a man who has an $11 million dollar house in Malibu? Eight. No, not always. After a certain age, you got to like, you kind of just fuck it. Like, sorry. You, it's okay. You get, you get hurt. You got to pick yourself up and you got to get your stuff together. So, together. so if one of your friends is in a happy relationship mm -hmm. and they have a fight and she's hurting, you'll come and say, let's go party. Did they disrespect you? Was it overstepping any boundaries? No, I'm just saying, is that, is that what you'd say? No, if, as long as they weren't disrespecting you, no boundaries or overstep, fix that with your relationship. You're happy, you're in love. Wait, wait, so, so you wouldn't, as the friend, tell them to come out and party with you? That wouldn't be your advice? No. But why does it matter if you like, want to go party with your friend like does that mean like directly like oh we're put yourself in party, jonah hill's so shoes for like just a second gonna... so if 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 your girl goes out and parties in la with her friends crazy friends from her recent past and she's like hurting or whatever it is i'm not sure what the situation was don't you think that's pretty much that's a pretty big red flag for jonah hill that his yeah. this hurt his Stop the cap. His hurting girlfriend is going to go out and party. One hundred percent. Yes. Because yeah. <laughs> you know that those single friends are in her ear, are in her ear, like, oh, like it's okay. You can just like kiss that guy or mm. dance with that guy. Like I think that's very toxic. You'll never know. You'll yeah. never know. And can I ask you guys just just quickly to follow up? Is it what's more unattractive? A man who sets boundaries, like I think Jonah Hill's a bit of a bitch if I'm honest, but like a man who sets boundaries or a man who has no boundaries. What's more attractive? What's more? What's more unattractive? What's unattractive a bigger turn off? Someone no, no. that doesn't have boundaries because you no. know that he doesn't have boundaries with anybody else, any Thank other you. women in his life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're like a man who tells you what to do. Someone, Absolutely. If someone ever says, "I'm not good enough for you," leave. Mm. <laughs> they are obviously they telling you something cute. that you don't know yet, and obviously they know. It can be can be cute from a girl. If a guy says it, leave. Yes, no. but it can be I cute coming from a girl. Anyone. I'm not good enough. That's it's kind of a real red flag. No, 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 because. If, if a guy says that, it's a, it's a simping thing. But if a girl says, it's a difference between guys and girls when it comes to simping. Girls get re get rewarded for simping. Guys get broken up with for simping. Really? It's very different. Yeah, okay. If a girl dotes on you and says, you know, oh, like I'm not good enough for you, you're so amazing. That's that's a great thing. That's a green flag. But if I say that to you, you'll it'll be the biggest Good dick. Point. So it's like what's like an true. ego feed, like a, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm yeah, exactly. Men just want to be respected what ultimately. If I wanna, I, There's certain I, things that you girls live for, certain moments, and the moments we live for is when you come up and just say, I love you. I could not live without you. I respect you. I feel like if they say that they're they don't feel like they're good enough for you, that means they're struggling with that a little bit on their own. And good. so they don't feel good in that relationship. Good. I don't think it's good. I think that you should feel like comfortable with your partner not like you're inferior to them no i think that the girl always has to love the guy a little bit more than the guy loves the girl 
So True. if she feels like she's kind of chasing him, she feels like that, she, like he's the absolute best she can get, then she's not going to leave him. But if she feels like she's above him, then she'll leave his I ass. I don't think she should feel mm, above if, him. I is, just don't feel like she should feel like she's lesser than him or like she's not good enough. I feel like she shouldn't feel like she's not good enough. You know, do you, have you ever heard of the term hypergamy? No. Yes. So no. women are hypergamous daters, which means that they like to date across an up socioeconomic hierarchy. Mm. Men tend, can date down. Like, I'd be happy to date a girl who works at KFC. Do you guys get KFC here? Yes. Yeah. 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 I'd be happy to work, date a girl that works at KFC. If I worked at KFC, you guys wouldn't look twice at me. So women tend to date up. So we want, they, we want, you, to, we want you to look at... You guys say that, but I feel like yeah. that is, there's a double standard for that, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, what's the double standard? Like that, that people, like you'll say that you'll date someone that works, like a man that works at KFC, but when you're in that situation, would you really? No, God, no, you like, wouldn't. Would you oh. really? No one at this table Like would. being honest, like, would you really? It depends where Here, you are hands. in life. Any girls here who would date a fast food mm-hmm. worker? I like to be depends, it depends where you are in life. Like as a college student, granted you are eighteen. Yeah, yeah, different, yeah, absolutely. Wait, oh she. So your KFC worker is studying medicine. I mean, but let's also do a tier yeah. list. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's different. The fact of the matter is that women tend to date up the socioeconomic hierarchy. So we want you guys to be looking up at us and saying, "Oh my God, you are the best thing I could ever have." Well, I would agree with that too. I wouldn't too. stay with a man if I didn't feel that way. Exactly. I right. No, I, I exactly agree right. with you. I just don't yeah. feel like you should always be in a state where you feel like you don't deserve them. Because that's just, it just, it's not a but good way to I feel. I think maybe feeling or feeling deserved is probably the wrong way to Deserve-, put it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's also like a psychological component to it. In every relationship, there's somebody that's, that loves the other person more than, than mm. you know, the... Epi- the De- uh, yeah, deserved uh, isn't, the quite, isn't quite the, the right way to put it. But like if you're looking up and you feel like that they're the best you can mm-hmm. get, that's a good thing. Yeah. What if, if you just feel like you're really lucky I think to have it's them. admiration. Yeah, admiration. Yeah, no, I, I think they should definitely admire If you. I'm looking at, at my girl, I'm like, oh my God, like I'm so lucky to have you. Yeah, like, it's just not, not going to work. What if they have hobbies outside of KFC? <laughs> like no. You answer the question. Would you would you date I a guy who who had who worked at KFC with some hobbies or who liked to go rock climbing? I mean, if I w- I could be only fans creator and also work at like fucking Subway, Seven Eleven, fucking Walgreens. But then those are that's, those are both careers. Or Target, They're all both. of these places, In and Out. They have insurance. They have a lot of benefits. So you're saying that he's KF- works at KFC, but he's fucking loaded because he has another thing that he's got going on. No, well, I think you work in multiple jobs. There's you can never make too much money. Like that could be. That's your, not like, a hobby though. That's, that's an, uh, are, you, are you saying that if you were on a comp? level to the guy like if you were like making shit money on only fans and you also had a fast food like a job no, no, no. then saying, you would date a fast food guy no, bottom feeders. like okay if he only worked at kfc and didn't do anything else if he didn't do anything else besides work at kfc no yeah, sorry but, yeah Real- but what brian's saying is though like if you're earning high amounts of money mm-hmm. and then you're dating a guy who's earning minimum wage then that you're not going to put up with that. But if you're just struggling away, posting your booty on OnlyFans and you're only making like $10 a day, uh, then he, he's like on your level, you know? Yeah, I wouldn't be so, doing OnlyFans if that was it. So, I mean, just curious, maybe a better question is also to ask, like you're the guy who you're eventually going to marry, how much money would you like him to be earning, say when he turns, I mean, we, I, we have a variety of ages here in this group, but say when he's 30, 35, 40, in that age range, how much would you like your future partner husband to be making? 50K, 75K, 100K, more? Here, we'll go around the table really quick. Your, uh, your future partner, how much do you think he's gonna be earning? Go ahead. So, honest, Or do you want him to earn? Honestly, I don't necessarily care. Um, like, honestly, I don't really care. Obviously, I don't want- Stop the money. cap. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Let's be honest. So Otherwise, date, everyone's going to say that. You did a KFC guy? Come on. No, okay. Well, I was saying that I wouldn't necessarily date that. I just want someone that has drive in their life and that is able to kind of let me be able to travel with them. Like, we can travel together and, like, you can with what? spoil With what money? Sense. With the money. Like, with what money? What if he's poor? <laughs> you said you want to travel with him. That's going to take money. Okay, it's going to take money. Like, a hobby. like, number. I just want, I want someone that has like drive and they are I don't have like a certain number honestly like I wouldn't someone someone could come to me and they would be like oh I only make like 40k a year or something and like that's pretty low I, that is that's pretty, pretty low. low it is pretty low well yes, it's but. it's I think it's actually I think 45k is the average uh 
the median median average right. salary for for men in the U.S. That's not but what I. But it's low. No. It's low in the. I'm not trying to shit on anybody in the chat that makes that much or less, but. Living in California, if you want to live in like a major city, you're probably going to have to, you know, if you want a certain lifestyle, if you want to travel, mm. for example, go on vacations, if you want to, you know, afford a certain size house that has bedrooms. For, do you want kids? Maybe um, you don't want kids. So maybe I'm it's not sure, as... honestly, I haven't met a person like I'm open to it, but I haven't yeah. met a person that I would I could see like a life with. like sure. I want to meet someone that I'm like, oh, my God, I want it. Yeah, I want but, to have your babies. Yeah. But it would break down like this. You know, you have to look, okay, well, what city do I want to live in? The right. square footage of the house. How many bedrooms do you want? How many bathrooms? How many cars do you want to have? Yeah. Do you want the kids to have their own separate bedrooms? Mm -hmm. Do you want to travel two or three times a year? Um, you know, do, there, there's a bunch of other factors that you have to, you know, and then, and then what kind of house do you want? Do you want kind of like a mid-tier, low-tier, or like maybe a bit more luxury? The cars you have, do you want one car, two cars? Do you want mid-tier cars, you want luxury cars and uh, international travel versus domestic, you know, right. so all these are a factor. So we can say that money doesn't matter, but if you do want to, for example, have kids, you know, your partner's income mm -hmm. is going to be, is going to have to be a factor in, you know, a deciding factor in your partner. Correct. But I'm, I'm more so attracted to like, not even like a number like I am more attracted to someone that has the drive in their life to like want to make that money like if they are making 40k but they have like business ideas I do see what you're saying motion, because you know what I mean? women yeah. do tend to invest in men they'll yes. like they'll see someone with potential and they'll see yeah. a potential winner and they'll invest my mom is hilarious like that she was she's single at like 50 and she saw a guy who earned good money not so not so attractive in terms of what he had going on she took him she goes grow out the facial hair we'll get you a new wardrobe yeah. this that and now he walks around like an absolute don yeah, and she's invested in that guy smart. and now took him from like a five to a nine no yeah and that's how my parents were like my mom my dad wasn't making like a ton of money but then they started dating and she saw that he had this drive and he's like doing very well for himself he's doing amazing mm. and that's like something that i would want like honestly in life to be able to grow with someone i and, yeah i think some women move like that but there's also i think just as many women i disagree with you a bit slightly here mm. in that i think a lot of women wait at the finish line and fuck the winners and fuck the winners yep. so i think when i don't think you're wrong for saying and there's definitely a lot of women who do care about ambition but I think my view on it is women are not so concerned with a man's ambition as they are concerned with has he reaped the benefits yes. of said ambition because a, an ambitious guy who there's a lot of like really ambitious guys that want to fucking be SoundCloud rappers and shit yeah. that work at fast food restaurants. Maybe one day they'll, they'll be successful. But I think women are much more tuned to actually picking the men who have already reaped the benefits of said ambition. And it's an age thing as well. Like if you're 21 and you see a guy who's like studying a whatever, but he's broke and you know that he's going to be rich one day, then that's a good horse to bet on. Yeah. But if he's 40 and he's not earning any money, but he's yeah. got ambition, yeah. sorry, mate. Yeah, not and happening. a lot of people who have ambition don't make it. Like not everybody is going to make it. You it's know? for yeah. sure about, I would say like how... It is the is that matching up to like the work they're putting in like mm -hmm. realist every day like type of thing maybe word people you know, have to be realistic uh, 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 people have to be realistic at some point you can have all the ambition in the world but not everyone can make it unfortunately not everybody is going to be a rock star yeah 80 20 rule well, what would you girls prefer a man with no boundaries or very strong boundaries and why um i would say a man with very strong boundaries because like i said earlier if he doesn't have boundaries with you he doesn't have boundaries with other people in his life and that's already that's a red flag to me personally i think that if it comes from a good place and good intentions to help you in life and like help you not hang out with people that are doing drugs or stuff like that i think that it's a positive thing honestly mm. can you think of a situation where somebody's ever had too strong of boundaries with you mm. If you're out on a night out, for example, and then he's like texting you every half an hour, where are you, where are you, what time should I pick you up, etc., is that a turn off or are you happy that no, he cares? No, I think that it's like he's, he cares about me. Like he wants to make sure I get home safe. Like I don't view it as a way of like him being like, oh, he's, she's doing something sketchy. Like mm -hmm. I view it as a way of like, oh, I care about you. I want to make sure that you get home safely and mm -hmm. that you're 
like protected and mm. I love that's what I look for I want to be protected and all that stuff like in a relationship yeah mm. if he's texting every like 20 minutes I think that's codependency though there's a fine line between really strict boundaries and then just, just having security. insecurity yeah. yeah leave some space to like talk about your day or like leave some space for space mm. <laughs> everyone just needs it doing something so simple and did not have the time to t text is a text for a reason so you can read it later mm -hmm. and if it's important you call or you mm -hmm. can't be that upset at the end of the day like mm. yeah i don't think you should discuss anything super important over text just because like right. you can't see what they're trying to express it's not you. personal there's it's room for miscommunication as well no. yeah totally like, and maybe 100%. that's what was happening with that like whole scandal she read it completely that. different mm. Fuck mm. Yeah. what do you guys think no boundaries or or too strict to boundaries. I mean, somewhere in the middle would be not the question. Like nice, Either but one. <laughs> I would definitely go for boundaries. Right. You know, that shows that you know you're self aware enough to have set those boundaries, right. or at least thought that. I mean, when I say strict boundaries, that. I mean Jonah boundaries. Mm. I, I wouldn't mean, say that's not really that strict. You don't, you, don't, you don't think they're strict? I don't think so. I think that he seems like he just depends. figured that out. Yeah. yeah. But what, okay, what, let's put this, if, if the strict boundaries were you can't post on social media, you have to give up your Instagram. That's a strict boundary. If you're yeah. supporting if me um, and we're like going strong, I want to have a family with you. I see myself spending the rest of my life. Yeah. I've so you'd there. give up your Instagram? If, if the man uh, took care of me. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You guys would all give up your Instagrams? No. I love no? to be spoiled. Why not? Because <laughs> that's. This is, this is the guy. You like this guy. What does Instagram yeah, give like you that he that, can't? That sh you, you should not be that insecure to a level to think that like me having an Instagram is going to ruin our bond. Right. So the, uh, so the act of don't. him saying that is a turn off. But what if he's like everything else matches everything that you would be looking for? But the one thing is he's saying like just get rid of the Instagram. Because maybe from his perspective it's like... If it he's could, giving you everything you need, like, what would you need from Instagram? That's really like tough. Like, other men's validation? Well, no. What if I just, I, I, this is what, I want to post my art. I want to share my art with the world. Your art? Like, if he like, said you can have your art have page. You want to pay. But, but not, but not but your page. But I can't post myself. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So you can have your art page. What's wrong with me? Why can't, why can't I do that? Like, it's what? just his boundaries. He's just. It's just. But why is that a boundary? Is it because you're? I don't know the guy. Other people are gonna like, <laughs> steal me away, or like, what's the deal? You know what I mean? There's. I. I well, got I mean, reason. I got that probably. Reason. That depends. That probably is a reason. Is so the fact that there are there are a lot of there are a lot of girls. There are a lot of girls who are getting a lot of attention from a lot of guys on Instagram. Instagram is the biggest dating app in the world. You're still advertising yeah. yourself as single. And maybe, on Instagram. It's, maybe it's not as much like you as much as it is like guys know guys and so knowing what other guys are thinking as they're like scrolling through and looking at your stuff like maybe he's just not comfortable with the idea of you putting yourself out there for other men to kind of have have access to in that way guys know guys but i know myself and if you're dating me and you really you really care about me like that and know me then you should know that i the attention or other people can't steal that you know what i mean and if that's not the case then don't don't talk to me please i've got a question for you if you knew that no guy would ever see your instagram would you still post pictures of yourself only fans you're only fans right i have i have and i, I just a little okay that aside the, an avenue yes that aside you're not making money if no guy could ever see your your photos would you still post on instagram I mean, there's been times where I haven't posted for like two years at a time. Mm -hmm. So like, that's not. The, and you would you know, have like, given up Mr. It's, it's, right. You weren't even posting. Yeah, Mr. Right no, comes it was, along. For, it was just like, I don't know what to, to I don't care. It, it, like I have pictures. Do you feel like things. it's maybe like an attachment thing for you? Like you feel like somebody's trying to control you? Like you don't want to yeah, let go of like, that, that autonomy that you have over Instagram? Yeah. It's like, why, why is that the, why is that the. What if he did it? What if he did it in a very loving way? And he said. You know, this is this no, is that who we are. No, that is telling me that you have a problem with yourself that you need to figure out before so, I get any more invested in you. So, what if he had a completely valid reason that had nothing to do with dating or anything like that? That had nothing to do with men looking at you. What if it was like a safety reason? Safety? What kind of safety? Just make it make sense. Just, just, just oh, just, well, here's an example. Here's an Whatever example. It is, make it make some sense. some people will like take stories at a restaurant while they're still at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And if you're like with a high status guy, he's like, 
Bro, don't be letting people sure. know where the fuck we are right now. I Rap Jonah it. Hill, you don't you don't want people to know like paparazzi or fucking stuff. Rapper got and killed because his girlfriend yeah. posted should, a photo. Oh, who, was who was that? Who was that rapper? Pa uh, yeah. Pop Smoke. Yeah. No, no, no. It was different. No. Different rapper. No. Who? Oh, Nick knows it. Uh, I did. Nick's behind I the scenes coming in clutch with the, yeah. yeah. She posted like a photo Rapper. of like the food and he was in it and then yeah. they yeah. showed up and they popped. What's his name? Yeah, Pop so, Smoke? So, but, nah, nah. No. Rest in but peace to Pop just, Smoke though. Just, just humor, uh, humor no. us. In, in a world where there was a, there was a valid reason that... <laughs> Wait, what? No, look, like... Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. Just... That all give. That's all giving your insecure. There's something you're still you haven't worked on. Like you're not like. If I'm if not, I'm if say say I'm dating you and yeah, I had yeah. I had some crazy stalker that was trying to kill me. Yeah. yeah. And I said, hey, you need to delete your Instagram if we're gonna be together. What does because do with you? You're but if, if, if we're if we're together you you could be in jeopardy as well but also things that you post could totally give away where i'm at what i'm then doing obviously i don't want us to die and i don't want to <laughs> but i don't want to put myself and my partner in danger but if this is like a like we're talking about like a generalized we're just talking like, about like theoretically if this were the case theoretically if it's like a special like thing yeah. like that then yeah okay like um whatever but also, you then still sound don't get into not a sure relationship with me knowing that I, I'm choosing this path in life to want to be more public than you. Okay, I thought I, I could change you. We, we can't work but it no. out. Like, it's okay. Like, I thought I could have fix you. We got Curtis M. Would Jake and Brian date a female prison guard if you were locked up for life? <laughs> yes. Duh. <laughs> She's going to sneak yes. you all the snacks. Oh, nice. any, any of them. Any of them. Yeah, but you can can't you could be married and just do conjugal visits. No, with your dude. Wife. She's gonna be there more. Oh, true. She's there daily. And she's gonna she could she get you like freebies, or she can get you. You need a woman's right? touch. You need prison. something from the outside. Oh, yeah. She knows yeah, but have you seen seen female prison? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's that, or you're getting the new inmates, and you're like making one. Of yeah, them. I guess you're right. Beggars <laughs> can't be choosers. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Aunt's yeah. a prison guard. She's fine. Oh, what's up? Yeah. yeah she's fine. Oh, she'd have a yeah, good time. You know, there's a lot of female prison guards who get fired for like going down. Oh, that they path. definitely. Well, because so, like, they're like. Up with yeah. the a lot of them. A lot of them actually like have a bit of a fantasy. Dynamic, you know. I feel like. Well, yeah. and, and it's also I. You know what I think it is. You know what I think it is. Mm. Is that a lot of men who are in prison despite being criminals are hyper masculine yes. like very masculine so these like yeah so these like female prison guards are like socioeconomically you're not like in the best position if you're like a prison yeah, guard. Yeah. so they're like oh man these guys are fucking hot <laughs> Let me, because they're pretty masculine themselves and then the guys are just like at the next level you know yeah. they need that next or level. they're just about like you know but, you know, there's a lot of girls like I, I knew a girl once who used to pen pal with like guys, and she's Australian. Yeah. She yes, was pen paling with yeah. guys who were in an, like a prison, like San Quentin, yeah. doing life. Yeah. Just a normal girl, and I'm just like, oh, that's so funny. It's such a deep sexual fantasy that <laughs> girls have there. Have, has any girl here ever sent a letter to an inmate in prison? Oh my god, she has. Oh. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Guilty oh, as we charged. Need, we need details. I can't give details. I can't give details. Come on, Sorry. who? Come on. Let's Wait, pretend. Let let's pretend think. it was your friend. <laughs> let's pretend it was someone else. Tell us what she did. She, your your, fr your, fr your, fr your friend. Your friend. Your friend sent letters. We're doing mental jujitsu. Tell us what your friend did. I really no? can't. Sorry, I should have never. Have you girls? This? All right, on this topic, have you girls ever seen the movie Three Hundred and Sixty Five Days? Yes. Yes. It's about like a mafia, like mobster who imprisons this girl, kidnaps her, and locks her up for a whole year, and then eventually they fuck. And like the tensions just build up this whole time. Is that and, like for, and, for, and for some and for some reason, these like women absolutely love this movie. It's like a Fifty Shades of Grey type thing. Uh, that's not Do you, have you if you, have you girls seen this? And if so, did it did it get you going a little bit? It did not. It definitely did you because you're always horny. <laughs> you were horny before the movie. <laughs> True, it did, but also the guy that played the character, he's very, very handsome. attractive. Yeah, he's very handsome. The accent. Big Italian, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, there, there's definitely a discrepancy between the, and I mean, maybe this is also due to the fact that there are more men who are institutionalized than women, but there are more women who are contacting men in prison seeking romance than the reverse. Mm -hmm. There's not like dudes who are just like, oh my God. No, dude. Get me a fucking... 
No, they're. Did you see the Richard Love Ramirez trial? trial? The you Richard Ramirez, the, the night, the, the, the night crawl. Who the fuck is that? What? The the night. Uh, what's he called? The he night. The NFL. No, Richard Ramirez. He's like the uh, yeah. a serial killer, yeah, yeah. and he's like the football he used, player. No, no, that's no, uh, a different no, guy. No, no, no. So he's this. The dude with the let me let me just explain this. So Richard Ramirez was like a serial killer who used to literally. The night. Sc- he, yes, that's the one. He used to sneak into people's houses and kill them. Like he's brutal, and he looks like the devil. He's the scariest guy I've ever seen in my life. But he's. He and at his at his trial. There were women in their hundreds. Bro, you look yeah, a little yeah. turned on right now. What the yeah, fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I just, I, re- I also went through this. Like, there was women that were in love. They were, they were there at the stands watching him do his trial, and they were mm. like obsessed with him because he. He was a sex attractive. symbol. Even, tra- even go back Manson, to these pictures. Like, come on, this man is ugly them. as hell. He's the he creepiest so looking guy I've ever seen. Richard so Ramirez. Richard evil. Ramirez. His, yeah, he's not cute. It's terrifying. It's terrifying. But the thing is, back then, if you look at the women, they were into gory stuff they're into like kidnapping it's a do you think it's changed though i think i think it's something that's that's like inherent king shame Mm -hmm. but the thing is this man he actually you know took people's lives it's a difference between role playing that yeah and then actually doing that there's a there's a book called a billion wicked thoughts i don't know if you guys have ever heard of this book Mm -hmm. so it's a book done by a bunch of google engineers and basically what they did was they took billions of different google searches and then they rank ordered them in different categories and one of the categories that they did was female pornographic searches and when they looked at the the most search terms for female pornographic fantasies can i just really quickly go around the table just really quickly give me one word or one sentence what you think women would be searching like what that would be women yes what do you women are searching on when they look at porn lesbian porn lesbian yeah are we uh like bdsm yeah type vibes yeah yep Definitely lesbian BDSM, mm-hmm. but the, I think like big. I yep, I lesbian say, BDSM. I would say like rape, rape fantasies are great. Right, but the, the, okay, okay, fantasy. let's not talk about this. Um, <clears throat> Can I tell you the five because huh? they're pretty, they're pretty, they're pretty PG. If if you're gonna say the R word, Anything no, 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 no let's say C and C, not all C and C. So the five were, um, I might get some of these wrong, but vampire, surgeon. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Right. Hi- Pirate, I've heard billionaire, this. and something else. Surgeon. Surgeon. Oh, did you say surgeon? Oh. I might have said surgeon. Yeah. Interesting. Um, Werewolf, vampire. Werewolf. That was the other one. Surgeon. Yes. Billionaire? Exactly. Why? Come on now. I'm so, a vampire. Okay, vampire. I Wait, said. hold on. Okay, we're we're not gonna let you off the hook that easily. Oh, you <laughs> sent. Did you know this person personally? Stop! I knew you were gonna go back. Oh no. Come on. Obviously. Okay. I mean, yeah, I knew the person. Ta- here, let, let me it. ask. Let me ask some questions. Okay. <laughs> What was his prison, like, what was the length of his prison sentence? Do you um, know? I Five years, 10 years, 20 years, I, life? I don't think I know that. I was, I was young. It was a, it was a while ago. So Were you like, dating him prior to him being locked up? Yes. Okay, so you were romantically involved prior. Okay, yes. I mean, that's not quite as objectionable, how, how I suppose. How involved yeah. before he went um, away? Were you involved in the murder? <laughs> no murder. <laughs> Oh, okay, that's pretty based. There's like green flag if you helped him hide the body. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of based. Yeah. That's kind of like loyalty. Right or die. Down. Yeah. Down. <laughs> oh, it's okay. You sent him letters. You were already romantically involved with him. This wasn't some guy who you saw yeah, on the news. Letters, but the thing is, it was a lot of red flags. It was already like I was already thinking about not talking to him Drugs. already before he had gotten in trouble. Um, got in trouble. Talked to him for a little bit, and then was like, "This is boring. I need this in-person stuff. Can't do this long distance locked up. Can't do it." We'll see you later. It's a lot. That's a lot. It is a lot. Wow. But I mean, it was, you know, the role play was nice for a bit, and now we're on to the next. Well, and you said you were really young at the time, too, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so your question was to the panel, uh, would you date a guy who makes less than you? Mm-hmm. So we'll go around the table on this. Go ahead. So like I said earlier, um, at my age, 26, obviously, if I was, like, way older, I would want the man to be making a nice amount of money to provide for me and our future family, whatever. Um, But as I was saying earlier, um, I find it very, very attractive when they have the drive to make that money. And I I know like not everyone succeeds, but it's just like, it's so attractive to me, like with someone that has that. What age group are you talking about? What age group do you look for in a man? Um, I don't have like a specific age group, honestly, but like, But I don't, I don't necessarily like saying that I am attracted to someone that makes a certain amount of money because like... If you had to give an average of the last three guys you've been seeing, what's the average age, do you think? Mm, like 
in their t- like twenties, like like uh, middle north, kind of where north my, of north twenties, yeah, yes, yeah. So like my age, um, I was how old are you? Someone that was thirty. Um, I'm twenty six. Twenty six. Mm-hmm. So a guy about thirty. If he's thirty, and he's got the drive, but he doesn't have those Benjamins, is that is that acceptable or is that unacceptable? Because you have to understand right. that it is tough out here. Yeah. Like when you it's walk when I when you walk around LA and you like I don't understand how people yeah. met, like live in Los Angeles and just make a normal wage. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It, like it's it's so expensive, and like life is only getting more expensive. Inflation is only getting worse. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but over the last 20, 15 years or whatever, it's only getting worse. People used to be able to buy a house off of a one person salary. So, like it's all well and good to say like drive. But, right. but life is going to be fucking miserable if you yeah. don't have money. I agree. Yeah. And you look like a girl who likes the finer things, I might do. I add. I do. I do like to be spoiled. Yeah. Well, then <laughs> drive won't spoil you. Number that, so I would prefer for the man to be making more money. But like if I met someone that was making less than me mm. and he made me happy and like could provide me with things and like... I, I get what you're saying. The chemistry is there. I, like, I, think, I think this yeah. is another product of yeah. why feminism ruins everything. Because... I think that like feminism also is like in, like says that like gold diggers women like women who want to sort of just marry a man for his resources, of, yeah. and I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. Like women have also women have always since the beginning of time looked for security yeah. and looked for a man with resources, and then men have always looked for youth, beauty, and fertility since the absolute beginning of time. But now I feel like women are so afraid to just say, yeah, I like I want a guy who has resources and who right. can look after me. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but like it's such people like women are so hesitant to say that yeah i mean i would love to be taken care of and like protected but i'm also i can also take care of myself too so if i found someone that was like that genuinely made me happy and like we can do things together that i'm passionate about that he's passionate about like i'm i I wouldn't like push him away because he doesn't make that money so it's not the be all and end all but if if the other ducks were to align you'd Mm -hmm. you'd you'd look at it but like yeah like i would prefer for a man to take care of you could conceptually yeah not not have a man who makes right. a lot of money okay yeah. let's allow the rest of the panel to answer what about you i mean i i, I like i pretty sure i'm on the same page as as burke about that like it's not it's not gonna like deter me from like talking to you or dating your own because i've had experiences in my own past where I, like i have i've been definitely pulling in everything and it didn't didn't make him look any less like worse in my eyes but at the same time like yeah i would prefer i would prefer more but i'm not gonna not give someone a chance like due to that either Mm -hmm. because you know everybody has their time where like i might be down at some point and want you to pull up and and put in the work (laughs) where i did before whatever what about you um no I want them to make more money than me. Um, realistically, the relationships I've been in, maybe like let's count the last past three, um, I've been the breadwinner and they hate it every single time. Yeah. It makes them feel like not mm. as manly. And, you know, as much as guys are probably going to hate that, being like, oh, yeah, she wants a guy, she's a gold digger, you know? Nice. But, like, realistically, like, you know, when I'm older, I want to invest in money, I want to own my own store. And I don't want to be doing OnlyFans anymore. So I would like my man to take care of me and, you know, insurance, make sure you're stable enough to take care of the kids and, you know, the Mm. house. And, you know, I'm going to get my bread on the side with my store and you're going to get your bread with however you're making your money. Do you you think that the um, OnlyFans is hindering your ability to be able to do that? 1000%. Yeah. It's hard to be in a relationship as a Mm -hmm. contact. What's your your thought process on the trade-off that you've done there? What do you mean? So you've done a trade-off where you've traded your market value by putting your body on the internet Mm -hmm. so what's the thought process in terms of making that trade-off because it seems like a significant trade-off to make your dating market value um well if that is what you want in the future a man to look after you i mean realistically most men don't like OnlyFans girls they don't like you know their woman being putting their body out so 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 with with your knowledge of that so you understand that concept which is good but what why do you do it then why do you do OnlyFans if, if you're sacrificing your, your future um, um, prospects? Because it's not necessarily it. what I do for money or what I do as my job right now doesn't necessarily make me as a person as whole. Like, I'm not just 
an OnlyFans girl. I'm not just Mistress Mandy. I'm Amanda. And, you know, me. That's how I am. I'm not, you know, full sex worker all the time. You know, if it's a client, then it's a client. I'm, I'm work duty. Yeah. But, you know. I've got no, no like, yeah. judgment whatsoever because, like I said, it is hard out here. People need to do what they need to do these days to be able to get by and make money. But it's not just, I'm not doing it just to get by. I chose to do this. I wasn't yeah. pressured. I wasn't. And that's what I'm asking is, like, you, you chose to do this because, right. and do you I think, think right what I'm asking person. is, do you think it's worth it for your future yeah. prospects I and the fact the right that you person. that you could, like, it could be a repulsive thing for somebody who potentially would, would look at you as a partner long term, but now doesn't because you do OnlyFans. That doesn't bother you? That's a personal problem, honestly. I feel like um, I've had partners who have accepted it and who are fine with what I do. Um, it just didn't work out. And then I have some partners where I wanted to be with them, but they didn't want to be with me because of I, what I did. But like I said, it's just a personal, personal preference. Um, no judgment, no harsh feelings. But my person will accept me for whatever I do, however I am. How do you, how do you frame it? So if you're in a relationship and say you start seeing somebody, mm -hmm. because as guys, this is, this is not a trivial thing to have your like, girl have her body on the internet. It's not a trivial yeah, thing, not an everyday thing whatsoever. Um, so how do you frame it? Like when you guys have that initial conversation, if you're seeing each other? Well, most well, of the time people have my Instagram, so they automatically see the link in my bio. Yeah, okay. But, uh, you know... Um, I do have that conversation first time before I even get into anything with the person I make sure I'd, mm. hey you know I am a full send creator on OnlyFans I hope you know that I'm not gonna stop that um, I'm not gonna mm. you know just drop you, my Instagram you said before that you, you find men with boundaries more attractive right don't you think that would be a boundary for a man that you might find attractive yeah I've had uh, relationships in the past who weren't okay after knowing that I did have it and mm. I completely was like, you know what, respectable. And I stopped doing OnlyFans completely. Mm. And then they fucked me over. So I started my shit again. Right. So. Let's continue moving along with this question. And if we can try to get this everyone's answer without constant, uh, you know, go ahead. Um, no, I would not date a man that makes less than me. I mean, even so, like, part of the reason that I decided to take my career, like, toward cosmetology and hair was knowing that that's something that I, if I want to, can go fall back on. But the plan is honestly to have a family and be able to be at home with the kids and, and take care of things there. I think, like I said, like naturally men, men are the providers and um, women are, are more nurturing. And I mean, it's just kind of biology when it comes down to it. Um, I would not date someone who makes less money than me. Just I really enjoy the drive and I like to be with someone who has ambition and pushes me to want to work for more. So that's kind of just what I go after as someone with a hard work ethic. Um, and I know that everyone's saying like, yeah, people, some people fail, but it's the part of getting back up and keeping on trying mm -hmm. and keeping on going for that goal. That's super attractive to me. I'm really shocked by everyone's answers. Um, I think I would date a man who makes less than me. I think I'm probably gonna have to date a man that makes less than me because I'm gonna be making a good amount of money um, yeah. Well, hold on. Expand on that a little bit. You're gonna you're gonna be making a lot of money. What What do you mean? Doing what? Because right a now, pilot. oh, as a pilot. Yeah. How much do pilots make? Um, you start off at about ninety k, and then in the middle of it, about two fifty. Towards the end of your career, you're. Are you probably... talking commercial pilot? Commercial, like yeah. Flights and. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, like, if we're talking the big three, which is. The only thing I'm gonna I'm what's, gonna go what's for the, the big, big three. Uh, Delta, American, United. Okay. Yeah. What about like Hawaiian Airlines. Hawaiian not, Airlines. You're still like making mid, six mid figures. Tier? Yeah. Well, you said by the end of the career you're making 250k. No, that's like middle of career. Mid like, career, but so yeah. by the time what you're 45, 40, you're gonna be I'd making. I'd say like 35. 35 30. pilots are making 250k. I mean, if you get you into sure? it young, I'm young. I'm going to be in the airline and I'm going to be flying airline in like two years. Have you, you Wait, are flying you're, planes now? I do fly planes now as a student. Like charter planes sort of thing? You're 24, correct? I'm 24, yeah. Okay. So, in okay. Is that true? That Chat, is that true that pilots make, <laughs> at by 35, they make 250K? But look at how much debt then is there and time spent for schooling. That's true. Is that true, chat? Yeah, so What's you the average, like, average commercial pilot's uh, income? Am I? 
So while people are um, like getting their mile, their their flight miles for the, especially their commercial pilot's license, you're actually teaching a lot as well. Yeah. So it's sometimes it pays for itself. Yeah, the smallest, the smallest, dinkiest starter airlines are hiring brand new, fresh out of school, ninety thousand dollars for pilots to yeah. be a okay. pilot. Yeah. All right. Well, even okay. Let's let's assume it's true, right? Um, so you want to be a pilot. Okay, there's there's a lot there. So, but you said you're you are willing to date a guy who makes less than you, and you you think frankly it's going to be difficult for you to find a guy who's going to make as much as you will make. Is that correct? Yeah, and I think the guys. I think you become a slave to money once you start making too much, and so I think it's hard to find a wealthy person who has strong morals and values. I'd be willing to take the pay cut for someone who shares my morals and values. You think wealthy people have less morals and values? I've seen it for Compar- some. Comparatively to people who aren't wealthy? I've, I've seen their values be put in the wrong places. And like I said, I think you become a slave to money. As, as a general rule, though, you think that people who have resources are, are, have less morals? Generally. Sounds like the lib hasn't quite died in you. I, I I've been, a, I've been around that. that community. I've seen it firsthand. I, yeah. It's not a blanket statement. It's just very you common. See, you see, I find that in order to get to the top, there's a, there's a misconception that you have to stand on people's heads. And that does happen, obviously. But in order to get to the top, you also have to provide value and you have to you have to solve problems and you have to hire people and you have to know how to manage relationships and you have to know how to bring a value in many different ways. Yeah, that's fair. I don't think stepping on people to get to the top is the bad thing. That's just that's just the industry. But I see people care more about cars, purses, materialistic things. And they're so focused on these materialistic things and not focused on their families, spending time with their families. Like they take so much time to work that they neglect their wives, they neglect their children. I see what you're saying. So you think people who are more wealthy and have more resources tend to have less time, so less time for their families. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because once you start making a ton of money, you just can't stop. You always want more. Yeah, but also people who are struggling for money are working a lot of jobs. Um, I would date someone who makes less than me, but I don't think I would marry someone who makes less than me because I want to be a stay at home mom. I want to work, but like very little just because you do have to do a lot in the house and I want a lot of kids. Hell yeah. Just a reminder. So who said that they would date a guy who makes less than them? Just show of hands. You would date a guy who makes less than them. Kind of. Show of hands. I guess. I need to scoot in here. Kind of. Uh, you would you stay at home mom? <clears throat> Well, I would date, like, not marry. <laughs> like, would like, you? But then what's the then what's the point of dating if you're not gonna marry? Hold on. Would you be okay <laughs> with a stay-at-home dad? So you're the 100% breadwinner, and he's just stay-at-home dad taking care of the kids. Mm, that's a little that's a little bit of a reach. Like it would be, I don't know. Okay. It wouldn't be a no. Picture this situation: you come home from a long day of work, and you're stressed, and your man is at home. And he's got dinner on the stove for you. And he's wearing a little a pink apron. Cute. Yeah. And he's wearing his pink apron. And then he has to go and do the grocery shopping. So he has to ask you for the credit card. And then he jumps in your car to go and drive what? to the shopping okay, center to use your credit much. card. That part's imagine, boring, no? imagine how imagine. miserable he would be. He's miserable? Yes. If my husband is... He would pull over and scream. If my husband is like stay at home dad and I'm the breadwinner... My husband has his own car. My husband has his own card. My husband is set, just like I would. But it's your money, isn't it? We all know it's your money. And that's fine as long as you're taking care of my kids, our kids. I don't know. That's like the full response. I think in practice, I think in practice you'd be you'd be pretty off it. A man who takes care of his family is that not sexy? Taking care of your family as a man isn't being a stay-at-home dad. Taking care of your family is providing financially. I can. Acts of service. Let's go. Should, but, yeah. Wait, should we talk about how um, lots of people are saying because I'm 39, I'm too picky and I oh. shouldn't and I shouldn't have uh, so many. I shouldn't be asking for so much. I'm asking for too much because I'm 39. Yeah. Just out of curiosity. So yeah. do you want kids? I'm open either way. You're open. either. Yeah, way. I'm open to having a child. Um, and if I don't have a child, then. Okay. I'm okay with that. Do you date people who do have kids? And I don't date people with children, no. Okay. Have you before? I tried once because a friend of mine rec- was like, why don't you try dating men with kids? And I tried it and it wasn't for me. 
Mm. The question comes back to that, like, if you do want to have kids, mm. then obviously well, 39, you're getting on. So it's going to be much, much harder yeah. for you to have kids from now on. Mm-hmm. So then I think that that's what people would be alluding to in terms okay. of lowering the bar a little bit with your standards. Um, yeah. So for me, so yeah, I only have probably a few years if I want to have a child. If I meet someone and we get on quickly and it's the right person and I, I get pregnant and we have a child, that's beautiful. If I don't meet the man who is for me until my 50s and that time has passed for me, um, I can show my maternity and my femininity and that love in other ways. Um, And it will probably be something that I do mourn to some extent, but that's okay. Um, I just would want to find the right person for me. And how, how much are you willing to wiggle? in terms of this arrangement because if you did want to have kids like like we just said the mm-hmm. clock's ticking quite mm-hmm. a bit are you uh, do you have wiggle room there or is it are you pretty set in, in your ways in, so, so, so give me, let's, let's, let's just let's, let's just take the first date for example <laughs> okay i think that you're you expect too much in mm-hmm. terms of the first date okay i can understand that you're asking want, him or having him i'll explain for, it okay. so like I, I can understand why you'd want someone to be financially sort of stable mm-hmm. and then obviously that first date thing that's a generosity thing um and you know that's a, that's an attractive thing but in terms of pay, paying for the first dates maybe the guy is just seeing if you're willing to go halves like maybe he's willing to maybe he's just maybe maybe I've he's just halves. doing that to just see if you have if you if you understand reciprocity maybe and i've gone halves and i've reached for my wallet and i've reached for my wallet with the intention to offer i've also not the reached. Old fumble it doesn't, yeah i've proper reach. but i've i've i'll if i'm going like i'll actually you yeah. know i will so i've done all the different there, i ways, i just think, I, I i'm not sure if i really necessarily believe you when you say that you that's an automatic no go because it has to be something else that happened in the date because if he if it was a really good date and yeah. if he was a good prospect mm-hmm. and if you do want to have kids in the future mm-hmm. surely you wouldn't just not go on a second date because he it's for an interesting reason. question because i think the men that i'm going on dates with they they don't want me to pay for half so it's a, it's i i'm trying to imagine a scenario with the, a man i'm going on a date with who wants to go halves but I, i'm not like what about like i just said reciprocity okay. He wants to just he wants you to, to be showing that you're mm-hmm. willing to reciprocate from the jump. Okay, so if I'm on a date and he wants me to go halves, I'll go halves. Mm. I've said that. But then you but won't go on a second date. Probably not. Probably not. But what if it was a what if it was a good date otherwise? And what if you were actually very surprised because he was generous in other regards and he struck you as a generous person? Yeah, then I would. I would. Hmm. It's not an end all be all. It's just it's a it's a difficult question because the men that I go on dates with are not asking me to go have it's just like not in their nature really maybe to ask me to go have these. Hmm. So I'm not in that scenario. Yeah, um, I see what you mean. I, I don't So so there I mean getting back to the whole wiggle room thing. There is okay. wiggle room. You do have wiggle room in in in, in terms of the dates because it is but it, it is, depends on what we're wiggling on. Like, like I just like said. Like what? Like he does, like His he penis? goes, like he goes, ha- like he goes halvesies on a first oh. date. Yeah, just little things Different like that. Because, oh, like, if, if if you do want to have children, then that should be something that you're pursuing with some vigor, yeah. rather than just saying, "Oh, well, not him, not him, not him, not him." Mm-hmm. You know. So, yeah. if you're pursuing it, then you'd want to maybe get to know somebody on a deeper level before you reject them for not wanting to sure. pay for the date every time. Sure, I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Jake from Rattlesnake TV, are you yeah. saying that she has too high standards? Yes, I am actually. Oh my God. <laughs> well, you know, I, what, I, I actually appreciate the standards though. I like, I like the fact that you like it just, know what you right. want. But in terms I, of your own, if if I were you, like, and you know, you were sort of heading towards your forties. Data homeless it's, it's person. A, it's a, just kidding. I'm kidding. It's 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 not. I, I don't. My personal opinion is that it's not a very nice existence to be north of fifty and not have a family. Mm. So that's fair. But men really don't get that degree of attention. So absolutely, there's, a, there's a differential there. So and, and a lot of that just has to do with the fact that like men, I mean, men are typically the ones who do initiate yeah. women. And if it's the other way around, I think women should be simps, though. So I'm like, I have a very honestly, not a lot of people know how to handle that. Oh, it's great. Like if a fucking chicks all over you like simping. It's wonderful. Yeah. It's great. I think certain people are very I don't know. pretty simpy. I think I've been yeah. simping with simpy. I'm like as like too forward. Yeah. Depends. I'm curious how everybody feels about that because I don't know how 
how it differs now versus like throughout time a little bit but the idea of like women um like women asking for a man's phone number like kind of initiating more of that or kind of being like considered forward sometimes like how do you guys mm -hmm. i guess how do you guys I, feel about we that? don't want a girl to be aggressive about it What's but you can aggressive? still you can still like show interest you can still take initiative but do so in like a kind of a feminine what's aggressive way. Like? i've heard i've just heard like it's more so like women like or they they set the guy up to be in the position to move it forward versus like the woman. Yes. The yeah, you'll plant it How do you in feel about that? For two seconds and then that's your sign. It, I know, yeah. please say that, what's that their eyelashes like, or huh? their hand. What's like the aggressive? If what's they're the like aggressive? constantly messaging you. Like I've had a few girls do that where they where like, they like will the constantly only... be constantly like replying to people would like describe it as like flingy and But and if like a woman were to slide into your DMs, how does that mean? No, no, that's fine. If if she slides into your DMs, that's fine. But if she does it once every three days, then that's different. You know I think it's annoying. But if, but if you've made the initial contact and if you've gone on a date and then she simps on you after that, it's glorious. Okay, so how yeah. about what if, if, it's, if it's them sliding into your DMs, like a friendlier approach, as in like, it's like, oh, just like catching up to be friends yeah. versus like, hey, like, I think you're attractive. Let's go out. Like, how mm. does that differ? Is that too much then for a woman to say like, hey. No, because if, if she does that, then I think that she's off. doing that to a lot of other guys too. I think it's like, it's a like little a, too much it's a process, you know? Mm. If she's that forward with me, then I'm like, okay, well then she's obviously forward with everyone else. But if she, if, but if it feels exclusive and if it feels like a little bit more rare, then that'll be different. Also, anything like overtly anyway. sexual, like if she's like, yo, let me suck that dick. It's like, okay, oh, okay. relax, lady. On the first oh, Brian, but, 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 you like, out. but you like women simping. What do you mean? Is that not? Just no, 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 no. It's yeah, just I'm like, just dude, with. it's like simping in a cute way. You know I would like a weird yeah. like, more genuine. Like, like maybe hm? like wishing you had a good day. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. And also like when when, when you're just around just the two of you at home and she always got her hands on you like mm. I know I keep bringing it back but European Affection. girls are great like that. They're very affectionate. Yeah. Even like if you're lying at the beach they're always just like touching your back and yeah. stroking you. Just just, just stuff like, like intimacy this. but yeah. Like nice feminine yeah. tender. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well that sort of thing. That's like what simping is for She's a girl. Like, I think a lot of that she wants intimacy for you. like I this is one thing that I think is like people they've started away from what love is and they think like lust is love and intimacy means sex when in reality a lot of it has to just do has to do with so affection mm. And, mm. and genuine love and I think and often with a, with a guy who's like you know very busy and career driven and always around other guys and doing deals and like living a very sort of fast paced masculine lifestyle mm -hmm. that's the perfect balance to have that escape as well. Exactly right. That. To have that soft, like feminine touch is absolutely perfect. Yeah, if a girl brings you peace, that's that's huge. That's yeah. the biggest thing. Like a girl that gives you a headache, expect, like as you said, like if you're a guy and you're a businessman, if you have a stressful life when it comes to work, like you need like a chick that brings you peace. There is no Major. feeling in the world like a like a woman's warmth absolutely. in that regard. And that's something yeah. I think can be so important as far as like balancing a household is um for for those who i guess mm. do want to go with more of the traditional routes like the woman is able to take that load off the man, exactly right there's not the there's also off. one of the greatest exactly. things that you can experience is somebody making a home for you 100 percent. coming home and there's and there's food on the table and like you know the house is clean and it's just it's a, such a wonderful feeling mm -hmm. and if, if a woman does that she can honestly take a guy who operates at 95 percent to 100 percent, and that's a big difference when you get to the upper echelons like that when a guy's operating at a high level to have a woman there who like can can push him to that next level mm -hmm. it's a big yeah. thing men want peace and love and like a caring touch from mm -hmm. their from their from their girl and men or sorry women want security and protection yeah, yeah. and also to use that social calibration that you guys are so good at very yeah. observant like there was a study done where they put people into a waiting room they thought they were doing something else like a different study and they brought them out of the waiting room after like half an hour and they they said to the man and the woman like a bunch of different people what did you notice and the girls were telling them all the details of the room and mm -hmm. everything and the guys were like oh, i don't remember anything so mm -hmm. women are much more observant socially so if you guys can use that superpower to like observe exactly what your man needs and take him to that next level honestly it's a, it's a genuine superpower well and that's something i think is so important especially we we're talking about feminism earlier is like it's become like who's what what's the better gender like who who can do more and trying to compare it's like comparing apples and oranges when in reality it's like we are designed to complement each other and work together exactly rather right. than mm -hmm. compete in the that, same that level. That notion is being destroyed though because feminism tells you you don't need to do anything for a man. Mm -hmm. You're independent, mm -hmm. boss babe, all of this sort of crap. Whereas yeah. really, we both complement each other and we both do things for each other and there's nothing wrong with that. And that there's just... nothing wrong with living a life where you want to secure a mate and a partner and a long-term 
a relationship with somebody you can build a legacy and a family with as well as like if if both i mean and if both want to work i think that's great like i i definitely like would love to like stay at home as well but i I know i want to still be out and about and have my own things going on with that um but just the, the idea of like parents being away from the kids so much both working super stressful and then coming home and being stressed with the kids that doesn't like there's no balance to that there's not really anything that's gonna like help take that load off at the end of the day. there was a study done in 2019 that um found that the average like american family parents spend i think it's 36 minutes of quality time with their children a day when and you, the like, rest when you is just the blue head teachers yeah right. exactly and then they go to school for six to eight hours a day mm-hmm. and learn god knows what yeah yeah 